Um, you know, we have this series. I think today we're live with someone who's extraordinary. All I want to say is we've caught everyone on a Saturday afternoon at 1.30, so we're going to keep this really high energy. And I can't think of a more high energy, more high confident, more high clear person <laughs> than Priyanka Chopra to be here with us. So we've got, we've got about 200 people just here live, but I think for the, at a 1 o'clock, we'd already had about 5,000, 6,000 people logged in, and I've been told now it's getting closer to about 15,000, and I think it'll grow. So uh, you don't have these kind of live telecasts actually online in many ways. So I think, uh, and what we're going to talk about today is going to be very, very different. So I think uh, the theme for us normally when we start off, Priyanka, is in our genre, it's called coffee real estate, coffee real, or coffee pink, as the <laughs> case may be in this particular case. So I think the next one hour, uh, I just want to walk through. Our core audience are people who are young professionals, learners, and youth. And as always, we have more questions than answers in our mind with everyone, whether we're changing jobs or whether we're doing whatever you want to do. So I think today to hear from you with such a different facet, I think is going to be very illuminating for everyone. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. So I think with that, let me just start with the first question. In Sky's Pink, there's a very nice, poignant moment when you're sitting, picked up the phone at a London phone booth, and you're talking to your son who's in Mumbai, and you're- Delhi. Is in Delhi. Producer of the Is film. in Delhi. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is in Delhi. It's okay. RSVP Films presents. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll get my it's back. Okay, I shot I'll get my back uh, on that in the next one hour. <laughs> so in Delhi. And basically what you're telling him is what everyone gets in advice, saying, listen, don't listen to anyone. If you believe your sky is pink, then it's pink. And if your sky is red, then it's red. What does that mean to you as a statement when you actually delivered that line? Because I think that is what reflects for most of us in life, you know? Like, part of it is about looking into the future and being bright, and I think part of it is also about us feeling we can be who we want to be. So that's a good place for us to start. I think the way I see it, first of all, hello everyone, and hello to everybody watching. Thank you so much for joining. Um, I've been looking forward to this because I think it'll be a really fun conversation. It's always fun to talk to him. Um, why this? this scene is so important because to me, it was a metaphor for life, right? We, so many people, so many of us, our choices are made for us, especially girls. We are specifically told that, you know, this is when, this is the college you will go to, this is the school you will go to, this is the career you should have. Even guys, like, you know, the pressures that our parents put on us with their dreams or, or their aspirations. Today, the world is a little bit different. Yeah. I remember when I told my grandmother that I was an actress, she said, but what's your job? And I was like, um, I act. She said, yeah, but like, what are you going to, like, how are you going to get make a living? So, and academics was a really important part of my family. So I, for me, it was so poignant and so important that Harika apna sky hota hai. You make your decisions about your individual life. Don't let anyone define your dreams. Your dreams will be yours. The bigger you dream, the higher you dream, if you are someone who's a fixer or someone who wants, likes to find things, you'll find your road to that dream. But if you don't aim high, you're never going to be able to want to walk up the ladder. You know, you have to keep aspirations for yourself. And so is the, is the core stick it out? Is the core aim high? Mine has a... Sometimes you don't want to stick it out because when, as soon as you take a step in a direction of something, you, know you it's realize working. It's, working, yeah, it's not, not working. working or whatever. Don't waste your time on it. I do multiple That's an important things. one. I, I really believe that. Um, that when you take that call of whether it's working for you or it's not working for you. But there are times where some people can just be like, you know, indecisive as well. I think it's very important to have a conversation with yourself and, and know that, all right, I don't think this is working for me. I'd like to switch into something else, yeah. but always have a plan B. I never have one plan. I, there's no do or die in the world that we live today. There are so many opportunities. You can literally sit at home, have an idea, and monetize it today. Um, you, can, you can make a business out of anything. So understand and know that this is the best time to be a young person, especially in India, because it's growing so much. The opportunities come from every angle. Yeah. So don't be afraid to experiment, take risks. If you take risks, then you have the 
the ability to evolve. If you stay in your safety zone, then you'll not evolve. And evolution is the name of the game, actually. So we're gonna, we're gonna chat about how it worked for you and how it didn't a little bit, but you used a very interesting word, which for me is very, very important, because we are who the choices we make in life. Completely. And I think that is something that I, even for a younger generation today, is something that they need to, because the crossroads that you come to in life are so innumerable. Half the time you don't even identify whether you're at a crossroad or not. Yeah. So the, if you are who you are by the choices you make, just some sense of what have been your crossroads in terms of that and what are the choices you've made that have, and how do you determine when you come to that crossroad on the choices you make? Because that I think is one of the most important aspects of growing up. Um, like he said, you are the sum of your choices at the end of, at the end of life. And there will be times where every opportunity is a door waiting to be opened, right? So you have to recognize opportunities, first of all. Everything is not the right opportunity. You have to recognize the potential of an opportunity. So if something like, for example, um, I went to America and started my career there at 32. It was a time when I was told that, you know, girls can't, I mean, you're over by then. Forget starting a career from the complete beginning. When I joined films at 19, I was told that, you know, just do everything quickly because shelf life usually is just about, you know, 10, 12 years if you're lucky. And so I did like five films a year and I was like doing everything that I could, slowly realizing that, you know, I define my time and I choose who I want to be. So recognizing that was very important, that I don't want to do five films a year, I want to do quality films. I recognized that and I started doing, when we did fashion, when we did Aethras, when I did Barfi, I chose films to me that pushed my envelope yeah. as an actor. So I didn't let what an audience wanted to see or what the industry needed me to do define the choice that I made. I chose what made me grow as an artist. And do you think midlife, you, you never change those choices? Do you, think, do you think you can reinvent yourself? Is that something that's... All the time. Yeah. Reinvention, is, reinvention is longevity. Yeah. If you can't evolve, then you're going to be stuck Actually, in time. Actually, that's an and interesting one. But that is an interesting one. Because totally. if, you're, if you're building longevity, yeah. you need to reinvent yourself you constantly. To. And you have to constantly check yourself. Do I know enough? There is no time in your life where you know everything. No one can know everything. Not even you after all your achievements, nobody. So you have to always be a student of life. I'm at this new place, what can I learn? What is the new thing that I can, what's the new skill set that I can learn? What is, um, like working for example, this is my first Hindi film that I've co-produced. I've learned so much from Sid and Ronnie, who I've done about six films with, um, because I think they're the best in the business. And the reason I called them up and I said I wanted to do this was because I wanted to learn. I've been in the business now, next year is gonna be 20 years for me. But that doesn't mean that I am not willing to learn, you know. I understand that there's a certain amount that I know and there's a lot more that I don't. So I feel like that kind of evolution is really important. When I decided to go into business and tech, I didn't know anything about it. So I learned from a lot from my venture capitalist manage, manager. So I learned from her, I listened to her, I understood what are the words, what, what, what happens when you want to, you know, raise a fund and how, how does it function? I still don't know enough about it, but yeah. asking the questions is very important. It's really important to not think that people will think you're stupid. Like a lot of people get afraid to ask questions because they're like, oh, lagna chahiye that I know my job. But trust me, it is ve it's so, even people who work for me, like my team, whenever I have new members, I always tell them, instead of making a mistake, ask me. If you don't know, just ask me. It's so much better to learn than to eventually end up making a mistake and then you look stupider. So I'm going to switch tracks. I think uh, for a lot of people, you, you, the general aspirational quality, I come from a lower middle class family, you come from a middle class home, and I think a lot of people who are watching today come from that, and therefore they just feel a little bit detached from their real aspiration and ambition. But it's doable. I mean, you're sitting here exactly doing Absolutely. that. Yeah. So, I mean, what is that? What is that one single X factor according to us? Because that's what everyone keeps searching. My sense is there isn't an X factor. It's something you give yourself or your own momentum. I think it's perseverance. One, um, it's not being afraid of working hard. Two, and third is confidence. You're not born with confidence. You have to teach yourself confidence. You have to teach yourself that when I walk into a room, how do I want people to react? And then become that. Be like water, Bruce Lee said that once. 
and I've really made that into my life. Be like water. We're all like a vessel. You can be put into any vessel and you can take the shape of it. As human beings, we have such an incredible ability to metamorphosize into whatever we want. You just have to want it bad enough. There's no free lunch in the world. So you wanted to badly enough be an aeronautical engineer? I really did, <laughs> but not as bad, I guess. <laughs> yeah, not as bad. So um, where did that start from? I mean, I mean, where, where did you take that and then decide there's another opportunity in your life? Because obviously you wanted to study about that. You were serious about that. It yeah. influenced you in your life. Um, so I come from a very academic background. My mother's side is everyone's a doctor or an engineer or something. So I was a very, I was a fan of, of physics. I loved physics. I love science. Um, I think science is incredible and um, everything that we've achieved as humanity in the fields of science and technology to me is just magical. It's like literally we are creating magic um, by understanding the universe. So I was, I wanted to be an aeronautical engineer because I think space was very fascinating for me. Creating um, so when Chandrayaan happened and I saw that two women uh, were helming the mission, I was like, that's what I wanted to be. I was so, it was such a moment for me. Without regrets, but? No regrets. No. I mean, I, I, you can't, I couldn't be a movie actor and a scientist together. Now that would be overachieving even for me. But you never know. <laughs> you never know, maybe later in life. But um, at that stage, did you feel the, the lack of, or the, of studying or learning or education, did you feel that? I did. It, it's one of my, it's, it's, one, it's something that I miss. Um, cause, and I want to do it at some point, but what happened was... Now you can do it online. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> I totally want to do it. In fact, I've discussed it as well, but it's just the, it's the paucity of time. When I was 17, by fluke, my mom sent my pictures in for Miss India and I happened to win it because I like winning. So I was like, it's my favorite. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I was sent for Miss World and I trained and I trained and I was the most confident girl in the room and I won that as well. So that sort of, then movies started coming my way and I remember this conversation my father, mother and I have. We've always had conversations in our home. We talk about pros and cons of every decision. There's a family meeting on the dinner table. We talk about ye karne se ye hoga, ye karne se ye hoga. So the question was that, you know, I, I joined Jehan College and I had, I had started studying again um, at 18. And when movies came to me, I was, I was struggling with the fact that I wanted to give it a shot because people believed in me, even when I didn't believe in myself. So um, dad said to me, he said, I don't want you to have a what if in your life. Hmm. So what if I would have done, what if I would have tried? So I said that, all right, he said, take a year, do movies. If you're terrible at it, you can always go back to school. I wasn't terrible at it. <laughs> so um, I recognized the opportunity, worked really hard, trained um, in my dancing skills, trained in, uh, in the way I speak, um, observed the directors that I worked with, my co-actors. I didn't know anything. My, my career has been my acting school. And then I taught myself along the way to be better. So who have been your, like if you had to name two teachers in your life, and maybe not as names, but even just what they stand for, people who really impacted you or taught you? Because I think each of us need to find our own mentors. I don't know if I've had a specific mentor, really. But I, like when I'm in a room, I like to learn from everyone. So I'm not the kind of actor who in between shots goes to my trailer and sits down. I'll always be on the monitor. I like to listen to why directors take choices why a, a, you know, a cinematographer will want a certain lens. I like to know what everyone's doing. I, I'm, a, I'm a learner, I'm a student of life. So that's how I kind of learned, by watching other actors, what someone's method was. I tried different methods. I tried being a method actor, I tried being a um, you know, spontaneous actor. I so saw when do you stop learning, I mean, in a sense? I mean, I know the, the senses you never do, but like... I think you stop learning when you want to quit. You know, when you want to go on a vacation, you don't need to learn on a vacation. But if you want to aspire to be someone, and if you want the universe to give you a successful career or life, then you never stop learning. You just so let's just talk about risks Yeah. in a broad sense, mm -hmm. okay? And I mean, all I'm just saying is, you haven't done what you've done without taking huge risks. Totally, massive risks. And I think generally for a working professional, or, work, or just the community, or mostly, and I think in youth in India, outside of the fear of failure is the risk. 
I don't think we take enough risks in our workplace. We don't take risk in our lives as much as we should. So just your message out there, because I think people need to be inspired to take more risks than they take today. Well, I do understand also, you know, like when, you're, when you have a job, you are supporting your family, you know, you don't want to take a risk on everyone else's lives that you're touching as well. So I get how it can be daunting and I get how it can be scary that I have something that I is my cushion and I have something to fall back on. If I take a risk, I might not even have that. I get it. But I, that's why I always have a couple of plans in place. That's why I never do just one thing. So suppose you have something which you're comfortable with. Like, I'll take my own example. Suppose I was doing movies in India, right, when I started to t decided to make an, um, a choice of doing work in America. So I continued to do work in India. I continued to produce films here. I and it took a lot more of my time. I had to fly back and forth. I had jet lag. I was tired. I didn't meet my family. But I continued keeping these roots as important to me while I was taking fledgling steps in the US. So I always had my, my support system yeah. over here. Even if I would have failed, I knew that I had something that I had consistently maintained. So that's one way of doing it. It takes a lot more work. It takes, a, you know, to handle two careers. But if you hadn't taken risks, would but you have I gone had, far? If I hadn't taken the risk, I wouldn't have. I mean, I was nobody. There was no precedence to what has happened with me in the U.S. Exactly. No one has ever been able to do it. So I didn't have a roadmap. Yeah. When I arrived there, I was. It was not like a aisa kiya, tum mujhe aisa karna I didn't know. I had to walk into rooms. I had to introduce myself. Say, I'm Priyanka Chopra. You don't know my work. And it is a big risk because you can be orphaned in two countries. Yeah. You know, that's something you've worked totally. very hard to not do, but it, you can easily be You could be. You could be like, but that was very, very important to me that I don't get orphaned in two countries. That I take an, like, I, I'm careful with the risks that I take, but I love taking risks that, you know, are scary as well. It, listen, you will, there will be times when you fail. Everyone fails. I fail too. The road to success, according to me, is what you do after you fail. Once a failure has happened, who are you? What are you going to do? What is your attitude? How do you pick yourself up? But in the no line that you're in, it. failures are very high profile. Absolutely. They're very high profile. I mean, for a lot of people, you fail, but your mom and dad might know, your spouse might know, somebody else. But when I'm you're in public, some of the, the sectors, it's like the it. whole, it's like laundry <laughs> out there hung. Yeah. That requires a very different temperament to handle over a period of time. Yeah. So. Um, that does. It requires having thick skin. It requires uh, prioritizing but yourself. It also means bouncing back, right? Thick skin is when you're when it's coming at you. Bouncing back is. But when I you're feel like that's Ronnie. That's something that we should really address because I feel like in the world of the internet today, there is so much negativity for young people. The comments that you get on Facebook or on Instagram, you know, everyone's always looking at for validation for what people are saying, yeah. what people think on my pictures, what they think about my business, when I put myself out there. So I think that in today's world, all of us require a little bit of a thick skin. Yes, mine is at another like stratosphere <laughs> because the whole world discusses every failure that I would have. But um, I think even for you guys, it's become so much more than just you know, at your house. It's not like you get criticism only from your family or your parents or your yeah. friends. Yeah, it is you quite public. You get it from, it's public. And I feel like it's really important to understand and prioritize who is important to you. Are the hundred people who are sitting behind the anonymity of their computer who might or might not invest in the business that you're advertising or, you know, maybe might or might not comment on, they're just commenting on your picture. Doesn't mean they're ever going to look at it again. Are they important? I've seen so many young kids who are driven to depression, who are di driven to mental issues, who are driven to like, you know, suicidal thoughts because of the kind of pressures that they get online. Yeah. And it's really important to compartmentalize and say, does this person matter? So why are we giving them so much importance? No, I mean, it's fun. You should have fun. I have fun. I read the comments. I read Twitter sometimes. I'm like, all right. But if someone's talking crap, I'm, n I'm not going to sit in my house and be depressed about it. Because then I'm, I'm only hurting myself and my ability to grow. You know, yeah. your ability to grow is a very, very individual journey. You're born alone, you die alone. I know that sounds morbid, but it's the truth. It is the truth. And, and you'll get like, used to that. Yeah, it's like a train journey. People come into your life and get out. It's like different compartments. 
for different times, whether that's your parents, whether that's your spouses, whether that's your friends, everyone will come in and go out, but your journey is yours. Hopefully not all of them are transient, but yeah, I get what you're saying in terms of I mean, of they are, babe. <laughs> Everyone is transient, think about it. Yeah, no, no, Unless, I, I, like, philosophically, I, don't I just want to, I mean, there's a large gathering, there's hope, you know, a lot of people I mean, out I there. I don't know. mean to be dark, but it's true. It's like everybody has their own individual journey. And, and what do you do with your individual journey? What does your train look like? You know, what speed do you travel at? Yeah, what That's, does your train look like is a good one. Yeah. A good one. I'm going to throw, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to open this up for one or two questions. But before that, I know all of us look to reach for our stars. Uh, but right now we're looking to reach for the sky because that's what we're here for, the sky is pink. But where do you, where, for you, what's next? I mean, you've straddled quite a few things. You come to that age when you can look at things. I know you're not going to ever be complacent and there'll be super ambition, but what's that next reach out to the sky for you? I feel like I'm still at a nascent stage in my career in the U.S. People might know me, but um, as an artist, I still want to be able to do a lot more with the kind of um, the kind of variety of work I've been able to do in India. I would love to, as an artist, be able to expand myself and do a variety of immersive experiences, do films that are like artistic, cinematic. But you put gold posts every six months, every one year for yourself, because I think that again is a very relevant thing for a pe young people I in am India. An, I, I do. I am. An, I don't think five year plan. I don't think ten year plan. Man proposes, God disposes. I believe in the today, I believe in the now. It's almost like school, right? So if you have final exams and you study like five days before, there are chances you might forget something and there are chances you might like, you're taking a lot more of a risk. I believe in being prepared. So if every day, every test that you have as you go through your term, if you get an A in every test, somehow your final exams are gonna be easier. Yeah. So yep. if every single day is excellent, your life will be excellent. You know, so I kind of focus on being excellent at whatever I'm doing right now. So the point is to still continue doing that. But before we go into questions, if you all don't mind, I have a question for Ronnie, which I'm very curious about. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> that, wasn't, that wasn't part of the plan. <laughs> yeah, it is. Come on. Okay. Now, I've known you for so many years. Okay. You've been working in so many capacities. What you've done with Swadesh Foundation is absolutely incredible. Um, how many toilets that you, did you guys get up recently? Yeah, I just walked out of a, a, out of a award and I, the first person I meet after, after an India Today Award on Gandhi Jayanti where we built 25,000 toilets. In that. Um, That's amazing. And I took a photograph, we were taking a photograph of the president and then actually what I wanted to do was take a photograph with you. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's what I mean. I mean, you, you've had such a prolific career. Um, you've left films, you've gone out, you've come back. What always draws you back to movies, first of all? Like, how is it that you step in and out of a million things, but you come back and make cinema, which is meaningful, which you are creative around? You're not just the kind of producer that puts in the money. You're a creative producer. You have thoughts. You you have ingenious ways of, of making a film reach its potential. How, what makes you keep coming back to cinema? Yeah, I mean, I think the answer is quite simple. One is impact. Mm -hmm. I think cinema makes a lot of impact. Uh, about two years back, I was addressing an agriculture conference because I was, uh, I was looking at that in rural India. And one young 19-year-old boy, and I said, look, this is the impact sector. We've got to do things in agriculture. And he raised his hand, and I said, can I ask the question? I said, sure. And he said, but you know, storytelling in movies, isn't that more impactful than anything else? And it kind of rang a, rang a bell with me that yes, I mean, so two things really, I think it's an impactful, uh, I wouldn't say business, and I think the second part is I love telling stories. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't mean telling stories, but in a manner in which I think stories that needs to be told. But at the end of the day, to put it back into context, we all need to be storytellers. I think if what UPGRAD stands for today and what we do in education, the, the, ray, the way we can bring to life and tell stories and be able to be engaging in our education is really what excites me. So that's, that's the short answer that's to, amazing. to what we want. Okay, we're gonna ask one question from the audience and if we can just pass the mic on straight there. Yeah, go for it. But you need to hold the mic because this is live. Yeah. It's on, good. Yes. 
Thank you so and much. I wanted to know what, what's your aha moment? Like one moment on the crossroad of your life, you felt, yeah, I have to go this way. And you still remember that. What's your that aha moment? moment? Like aha. Uh -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. Like that one. Uh -huh. Yeah, aha. Uh -huh. Not like aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to understand. <laughs> I'm just trying to. And you thought you were being, t and you thought you were tired. <laughs> You're in full uh -huh. spirit. Aha. Uh -huh. That one. Yeah. Um, I've had a, I have a, I've had a multiple few. One was when I was selected for Miss India. I went there just ki, all right, I'm going to get an opportunity to skip my pre-boards because, <laughs> <laughs> uh, because it was happening the same time as my pre-boards. So I was like, good, good, good. Um, but when I won, like when I was on that stage, I was like, I think I'm kind of good at this, you know? Uh, and I, that was my first like real aha moment of like, all right, I can really be a public person. I don't know what the capacity of it will be, how I'll do it. But I, I recognized what I was kind of good at, at, on that stage, actually, for the first time. The second time, I remember, after I won Miss World, I was coming back to Delhi, and there was a, um, there was a reception for me at the Taj Hotel. And it was the first time I traveled first class, and also I was very excited. And uh, so when we were coming in, there was a convoy of cars, and there was a massive hoarding, which says the Taj Hotel welcomes Miss World 2000 Priyanka Chopra. And I saw my name in such big letters. And I said, I'm never going to let that become smaller again. I want to get used to that. <laughs> and then I worked towards that. So that is the aha moment. That's ah, not the aha no, no, moment. No, no, it was. It was like, oh, chav, ye kaise yeah, yeah, consistently yeah, yeah. karume. You can't just wish it, na? you have to work towards ha working, making it happen. No, but I think it's a really a lovely question because I think it's something that gets you thinking because I think yeah. for a lot of people when you're at your crossroad, if you can reflect on what is your aha moment and what could be your next aha moment, it clarifies, it cuts through a lot of clutter for yeah. a lot of stuff that you really want to do. The question here from, from online is, everyone talks about the success of a successful person, but only the person knows the struggle behind it. So what was the slog before you earned the, sla the swag? <laughs> in, in a show, I, there's a long question. I think you can take an hour almost talking about yeah. it. But like, like in the same aha moment, like what are the one or two really sloggy, schleppy, like you felt, is this really worth it? I mean, I'm sure there are days you which have you felt. Been. Of course there are. I mean, I think it happened when, like there have been many, many times. I'm, I'm someone who's, I don't like to be a victim of circumstances. So I feel like everyone has tough things that they, they struggle with. Everyone has issues that they struggle with. So I, I never really end up talking about my struggles because I feel like I want to focus on my achievements. I feel that's a more positive attitude because that helps me forget those days where I'm slogging, where I feel like, you know, is this worth it? Um, there are times, I guess, when, you know, when I started doing movies, I was, I was marginalized a lot in terms of, because I wasn't from the industry, I guess. I don't know, I, can't, I don't know what to blame it on, but I mean, it was. But you felt like the outsider? Yeah, because getting. You still feel like the outsider? Um, no, I don't. I feel like I've created my own niche. Um, I have cousins coming in, so I'm creating the other Chopra clan. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Uh, but when I did, when I joined the industry in the beginning, you know, I was replaced by actresses that were recommended by, you know, actors or whatever, even after I'd signed films. And I used to feel so frustrated about the fact that I'm the one who is really, really good. I am talented, I am hardworking. I, I give it my 100%, but yet just a recommendation gets you replaced. Yeah. So that felt like crap. Um, I always, we were always told in the beginning that you know the, the major heroes decide who the casting of the heroine is. And I don't like, like going to the parties and doing the, you know, the chaprusi of sorts. Like I can't do it. So I used to get very irritated with that. I was like, now if, I'm, if I don't like someone, and then they don't want to work with me, like, I, that shouldn't be the basis of why I get work. So that was really frustrating of not being able to thank you, of, of doing that. Um, the struggle of, you know, not knowing my job when I first started, I was thrown into 
of working I think with these are all actors. correlated to any sector. I mean, it's not like, any sector. yeah, it's in any sector. Absolutely. I don't, I don't think anyone just, should here just feel that yeah, this, yeah, is, it's not, this is to it's do not with the entertainment film, it's not industry. The film yeah, industry. It's, it's, it's what everywhere else. It happens you're... everywhere. But I'm saying like, as I, um, I experienced it in, in yeah, the business yeah. and I'm sure many of Organization you exactly in the same way. That everywhere. That My mother said that it used to happen in hospitals with them. You know, like yeah. girls have to work three times harder to prove that mm. they have merit instead of just like being told that you're good enough or not. So all of those things were really frustrating. And you frustrating. think that's changing? Um, not really. Not as much as it should. Um, not as much as it should. I feel like in the entertainment business, for sure, definitely, um, in, in like our generation of actors have kind of given up the, um, they've given it the power back to the studios and the filmmakers, yeah. which I think is great. Um, you know, that star system of where everything revolves around the star is changing, which is amazing and that's how it should be. Filmmaking is not just one person. One person does not make a movie. It's about 300 people that contribute to it. So it's really important to think about that. And, and I can see that with my generation of co-actors that, you know, they're about the filmmaker and what the filmmaker's vision is and, and, and not just the five biggest filmmakers, but like, Everyone, the writers, it's amazing to see incredible writers coming into, um, into the movie business. It's amazing to see um, filmmakers who are not from the legacy of filmmakers handed it down, but new talent that's coming in. I think the internet is a blessing. Yeah. Um, the streaming services have provided platforms and entertainment where anyone who has talent and wants to tell stories can do it if you get the right opportunity. And you're seeing the film industry being flooded with talent from everywhere, and you can see the kind of movies that the audience is watching as well. Yeah, they're, they're a lot more real, they're a lot more content heavy films. Think, yeah. They are not escapist. At that time in India, you needed escapist films, you did. But India is at a precipice of change itself. So we want something, I feel, as an audience, which is a reflection of us. Yeah. And we are thinking as an audience, we are moving forward as an audience. India is one of the youngest countries in the world. About 60% of the Indian population is under the age of 35. So young India wants to see something that's important and it moves them and it shapes them. So and you're a UNICEF ambassador yes. and you pick right for education. Yes. So did that come to you or did you pick education as something you wanted to represent? I, I feel education, like I said, I was an education freak. I loved, loved um, physics. I, I had an academic career in mind before I got into arts. But um, I feel that education is gives children the ability to take charge of their future. There are so many kids in the world right now who don't know where their careers will go because, or their lives will go, how they will earn money, how they will support their family. But as soon as you have an education, at least you have a plan in your pocket, you know? Yeah. It gives you the ability to say, I can get a job, I can maybe have a life. It's a way of getting out of Maybe the system that you're stuck in. I think in. the point you made there on counseling and career counseling, and yeah. I think most people think when you're in the eighth standard, you need career counseling. I think even when you're 30 and you're at a crossroad, you Absolutely. need counseling. At 45, you're changing careers and you need counseling. So this element, especially since you're representing such a large institution, I think the element of not just education, but the element of counseling. Because for a lot of people, the question of what do you want to do when you grow up comes at a particular late stage, but it's actually there most of your life. Totally. And that's something we need to perpetuate and strengthen. And know. also have the courage to ask the question. Like I said, it's all right, to, it's all right to seek counseling in anything, whether it is emotional, whether it's professional, whether it is, it's all right to ask someone and say, I don't know, I want to educate myself, you know. Um, maybe this career works for me, maybe it doesn't. So, I mean, even with UNICEF, we do a lot of counseling in places where, you know, kids don't, don't know where they want to go or how they want to go. But more than anything, we are, in India, we're definitely working on adolescent children and their health because malnutrition is malnutrition also is a massive a problem in India and that affects the growth of a child, hence affecting the growth of an economy yeah. uh, because eventually they are the future. It's really, really important to be able to focus on what kids do and if they don't get an education, it's a whole generation of children that are that don't have the ability to take this country forward or the world forward, yeah. for that matter. So that's why I've invested in, inve in education a lot. I'm lucky that I have the career that I do. Um, I'm a student of it every single day. 
But uh, if I wasn't doing this, I would definitely be studying. And the reason why I would, and I, I, if I may say so myself, I think I would be excellent at what I do because I always like to be excellent, first of all, at anything that I do. And second of all, like even if I took academics on, I would have the potential of going into whatever career I want. And I think that freedom is amazing. So just to ask you a little bit more of a controversial question, because I think you know, almost every leader in the world now is talking more about less of globalization and more about being territorial, starting with the um, country that your husband lives in and now you live in, and now India. So I, I think that's a, that's a huge debate for a lot of people. I mean, a lot of youngsters feel they want to go out and travel, they want to educate, they want to come back. And you straddle both these. Um, and what's your sense today? Because you want to be global, and leaders are actually saying we want to be more territorial and national. I am global yet local. Um, when I started producing films, while I was um, in ha like working on my career in the US, I started making regional movies. I feel like you can do both. It's a very individual decision of who you want to be, how you want to be. You want to be local? Great. It's extremely, extremely important to plant our roots in our country as well and help as young people for the country to grow, absolutely. But at the same time, what you want to do and where your ambitions take you, that's your individual decision. I feel like I, I feel blessed about living in the, two of the greatest democracies in the world is that it gives you the ability to do that, is, is that you can have personal ambitions and, and follow them through. I think that's important. And any of these leaders inspire you at all? To do what? <laughs> <laughs> to do what? Well, I'm not saying to do anything, but just in a sense of drawing any inspiration or example of any sort. Um. I mean, I feel like I find, I find leaders interesting, let's just say. Okay. I find, <laughs> I find, um, I, 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 I. it's nice to observe them from far. Yes. I, I'm, I'm a little apolitical that way. I yeah. like to stay away from it, but um, I'm invested in the growth of both countries, the direction that it goes to. But politics is something that I yeah, and I it's a find, good idea. It's I a, find heavy, especially if you're in, in the sectors that you're in, which otherwise are pretty high profile. It's always yeah. a better thing to do. Okay, we're now going to throw it open to questions, and uh, th there's a mic coming there. If anyone else, just hold on to a mic. I'll come back to you, so we can move smoothly, and then we'll go to two more online. We need to give the online more disproportion. Go ahead. Yeah. So we all know that when we are working, we require breaks. So what's the Priyanka Chopra vacation like? When you go on vacation, what do you like to do? So I started taking a vacation only about three, four years ago. In your life? In my life. Yeah. That's called um, ambition. That's called whatever. Yeah. Uh, which is like horrible, but I just didn't have time. I, I it, you know, did as it have anything to do with love or did it have time to do with time? It was time. Not because love. Because I just, no. That, okay. that time it wasn't. Okay. Yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> it wasn't so important to me. Okay. Um, I think as soon as I finished something, I wanted to know what was the next thing. I would fill my days up with a million things that I do. I wanted to try so many different careers. But just to that, I want to ask you, was it the fear, the FOMO of being left out if you went for 15 days and you come back? Because a lot was, of people in, in jobs also do that today. They just feel if I take more than one month's leave, I'll be redundant. Yes. I think it was, and I'll be honest enough, it was not the fear of missing out, but it was the fear of um, if I don't do it, someone else that will. do it. And so I, I kept running, I kept running, and I was like in the race, and I was like, my hustle was on at every given moment, you know? So now cut to the last four last years. Last three, four you, years, yeah. suddenly, I, I think I found my feet in a place, and it took me, really, I started working, I was 17, and it took me getting into my early 30s to sort of, you know, take a breath and say, yeah, I want to take a weekend there. Yeah. Hmm. Like, just, oh, so just, 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 let's be clear here, working professionals. A weekend is considered a vacation, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I just, I, I just want to put that, in, just, just like put that. that into context. <laughs> just want to put that into context. Yes, okay. it did start with like yeah. just taking a weekend yeah. first. Yeah. I've never had weekends. Yeah. Um, so when Ronnie reminded me today, Saturday, Saturday. Yeah. Uh, so when Ronnie reminded me today was Saturday, I was like, Yeah, what difference? So, <laughs> yeah. I work Sundays. I work Diwali. Yeah. Whatever. I'd never, I'd never taken that time. But in the last four years, I understood the value of it. I understood that when I started taking that time out, I came back better. I came back stronger. I came back refreshed. My mind was not tired. And now I recommend it. But you know, it was not something that I knew also, earlier. Also, I think some sure. of the best ideas come to you when you're on downtime, Oh right? my gosh, fully. I took a vacation this year, um, me and my husband did, and we came out with two scripts. 
Yeah. Like, yeah. and it was amazing. Yeah, Literally absolutely. sitting by the beach. The downtime can be more productive than your It was so amazing. Time. And I realize that now, and I recommend it to people all the time. But what happens with, you know, vacations sometimes, I feel, is people say, people spend too much time working to get to a vacation. You know, ki, let's work this month and my vacation's coming up. I prefer to do the opposite. That your vacation is your reward if you have achieved something. If you haven't achieved something, I prefer to keep the hustle going. That's interesting. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sorry, where are you? Yeah, right at the back. So uh, there's a lot of talk about uh, creative visualization, which is uh, which has been spoken uh, by many management gurus, many uh, self-help gurus. So do you believe in the power of creative uh, imagination? Uh, this question is for both of you. Uh, like in your lives, do you practice this? And another question which is uh, very applicable to each and everybody present over here is we are, uh, we as individuals are brands within ourselves. So uh, how do we carve our own brand identity? So that is, uh, you know, with both the perspectives keep, keeping in mind yeah. the business and the entertainment. How do we actually, uh, you know, uh, get on to these two things? You want to talk about creative imagination first? No, you can go ahead with the brand first, I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. Um, the way I see it is the one thing that will create your own individual brand is to be unique. A lot of people don't know how to be unique. We get caught up in trends. We get caught up in, you know, this is what everyone is doing. Bhirchal is the worst thing to do. You have to find your identity. You have to find what is special about you because dusri cheez to already hai na. So if somebody comes into the industry and say, you know what, I want to be like, I want to be Priyanka Chopra. So many kids come and tell me that. And I was like, we have that already. I want to see you. We need you. So find your individuality. Find what your strengths are. Another thing that we do is we, we get so caught up by our weaknesses, what we don't have, what somebody else has. It's important to find what your strength is and then create a brand around that. You are your own brand, but your brand needs to be something that everyone wants. And they'll only want it when they don't have it. Right? Yeah, no, no, yeah, absolutely. I think that's very, very, very relevant. And just to add to that, I mean, brand is, an, is not something that you can plan for. It's something that what you come out and be. So yeah. I think it's in, it's in retrospect that you can say that in that context. Because when you're going in there, you can't just say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this publicity, absolutely. and then suddenly a brand. A brand is built over an experience that you feel, if she stands for the choices that she's made, whether in a films or in a career, if she stands for the performances, if she stands for diversity, that's the brand. Yeah. Than anything else. And it's not just being the star, because that's not really the brand. And you put that into context with anything else you want to do in life. Oh, I meant that even every single person, even if it's like not, like I have now become the brand that I have, but when I started, I knew what I, there were a few things that I knew what I stood for. You know, what uh, my integrity, the things that I would do, the things that I wouldn't do, what I was good at. I knew I was an orator. I knew I could speak. I knew I was, um, I may not be the prettiest girl in the room, but I knew that I could, I was talented. I knew I would immerse myself in, in my characters. So I, 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 work, I figured out what my strength was. And then I said, all right, I don't have this. Let me work on that. And then slowly I had the time to work on the other things as well, the things that were considered weaknesses. Yeah. Creative imagination. You start. No, I, I mean, I think, yeah. Creative imagination, just repeat the question because I think we lost the trend on that. Yeah. Ask so, the question. Uh, so nowadays, uh, like creative imagination is something which is uh, like really highlighted by many uh, management uh, gurus, self-help yeah. gurus that, yeah. you know, when you imagine something, yeah. uh, you know, you visualize it. Even uh, in some of the statements, even Virat Kohli has said that he imagines, uh, you know, that he's going to go out and score a hundred. Yeah. And that is how he's, he just, you know, visualizes every, every kind of uh, shot that he'll be playing very well. So, you know. No, I think that's, that's quite insightful. So I just want to get that straight versus virtual reality or anything else you were talking about. I love it. It's VR, more right? about the, the willfulness and the willingness to want to do that. And I think that really depends on each one. I mean, it's, it's I think Priyanka started by saying that if you're very clear, this is what you want and want to be, the, the velocity of that is going to drive you. So I think what you're talking about is exactly that. If I can, if I can visualize something, and if I can have the roadmap for that. I think half the time, that's the uh, difference between dreaming and actually visualizing it, right? Because the dreaming is, you think about it, you go for a walk, it's there in your mind, but you almost feel it's not something I can achieve. But if you can put that into practice, that's when it really gets into a creative process. That's the best way maybe I can identify it for yeah. you. The I, I, yeah, I, don't, <clears throat> I don't do it. 
sorry. Um, I have heard it too. I've heard from a lot of people that, you know, visualizing works, the secret, whatever, you know, you just, you have a, a lot of my friends who are also massive brands in themselves, you know, have vision boards where they put up things that they want to achieve. I've never been able to do that somehow. I, I, I have my dreams when I sleep at night. Um, I think about where I want to be, but I believe in planning. I'm a fixer, I'm a solution finder. So I, I believe in preparedness. So if I want to, I don't know, say, um, produce a movie with them, what will that take? It'll take me to be able to have a script, which they might like. It'll take me getting a right, I work backwards. So if this is your, if this is what you want to achieve, you work backwards. If I need the right script, I need to find the right writer. I'll go and find writers. I'll work with writers myself. So I work at something where, I, so I know my roadmap will eventually get me to reach them and have them say, yes, I really like this, let's do it. But it starts with knowing what you want and then like a flow chart almost. You work backwards, um, that's what I do. I've never been able to, I've never achieved you know, visualizing something and then achieving it. I, I would love to do it like that, yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> In this hyper-competitive world, is it like achieving and staying successful every day? I mean, I guess what they're saying is, are you on a treadmill every day? Yeah, you do. I mean, you'd kind of have to. I, I, now I, think, I take, yeah, I take days that's, off that's, yeah. now, but um, you constantly have to still think about it. You have to strategize, you have to know where you want to go. I mean, in my career, though, for sure, it has only taken perseverance and work um, and constantly, you know, every single day thinking about, it's, it depends on the trajectory you want, really. It's where you want to go, that's how you have to work. If you want the sky, you're going to have to get onto a rocket and get there, you know? So it's what, it depends on how, what your, achieve, uh, what your ambition is. Yeah, really. but I think even in today's real life, there is a sense of a treadmill. And I don't mean treadmill in a monotonous way, but treadmill in a way in which you need to be on top of things and an ongoing You have basis. to be on top of things because there's a million people who can do it better than you. So I feel like what I have achieved today, I'm sure there are other people who could do it better than me. I've just done it every single day. Um, and I'm not scared of the hustle, you know? Yeah, I get tired. Like I came in here today like, ah, day 11 of promotions. But I want to, this film is really special to me. I want to make sure I can reach as many people about the information that this film is coming. And for that, I need to do the work. So, just don't be afraid so of the So tell us for a second, why did you pick this film? <laughs> um, what, what did it move you and what's the decision or the choice you made to do that at this point in your career? It's I almost like your first film after five years, six three years. years. Three years. Three years. Seems like six now, what to do here. Yeah. Three. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was three seasons of Quantico and that take, it took a whole year, um, 11 months to shoot one season. So I didn't have time to do but a it's feature. It's a compliment. I'm saying it seems like <laughs> six years. I'm just explaining why. It wasn't out of choice that I didn't do a film here. Yeah. But um, no, yeah. I this film when I finished reading it, I just it evoked me. You know, it moved something in me, and I feel like that's the kind of cinema I want to be a part of now. I've I've been working in the business. I've done about sixty movies. You know, I've done. I want to do stuff that is artistic, is cinematic, is immersive for me, is fun. Um, challenges me. I want to be nervous when I go to a scene. This was a very performance heavy film for me. Um, it made me nervous when I used to go on set to think about the fact that I'm playing a real life person. This film is based on a real family. So I had the extra added responsibility of playing a, a real person and their real story. And they're not well known like Mary Com was or, or like when I did Baji Ramastani, that was also based on a real life um, woman when I played uh, Peshwin but but it was it was the pressure of this was absolutely different because you guys don't know them and and I'm going to be int introducing Aditi Chaudhary and the Chaudhary family to you so the extra responsibility of that excited me um, and I just feel I'm, I'm just really proud of it I knew when I read it that I would be really proud of doing this film because I just think it'll it changes people it makes you think you know and that's what you want to do with cinema. And at least so that's you the kind a of word cinema. called fun. Yeah. And I think that's the other part. Because I think when we sort of look at learning, education, lifelong, whatever else, there's always, we always look at it in a slightly more gambir way. We look at it as a little bit more of a serious task. But you already brought about the fact that you were taking a very serious topic and a real, real life situation 
but the word fun came into your thoughts. Because the film is fun. I mean, people yeah. think that it's a serious topic, so it'll be a heavy film where you'll have to take tissues and cry. And so for you, learning really in not. life has to be fun, right? Otherwise, you're not yeah, learning. Yeah, right? I have to enjoy because it. Because I think it can't be serious. No. So how do we? Because I think that's the big challenge for everyone when you're looking at learning. You can't be that serious about it. There has to be an element of so fun. My but parents, that's controversial. My parents were like that. Uh, my dad used to make everything an adventure. Everything was fun. Um, learning was fun. Moving was fun. We were in the military. Every two years, we'd be moving to a new place. That was fun. So this film, like Aditi and Niren, remind me of that. That no matter what happens in their lives, they find fun. And you have to every single day in your life, whether it's at work, whether when you're sitting in your cabin doing whatever you need to do, you have to like put a little music, like do this, have fun. Life is just too short to be serious. Life is a gift, it's a present. I mean, when you look around you, and I, I feel so privileged and blessed that my mother told me when I was very young, no matter how badly off you are in your life, someone is worse off than you. If you think about that, every day you will be grateful, every day you'll be blessed that I'm healthy, I have two feet, I have the ability to put food on my table every day, I have clothes that I want to wear. You know, those things just make you feel like wanting to be, have fun. And having fun is a way, I believe, of saying thank you to God. Yeah. When you enjoy life, that's what you're put on this earth for, is to enjoy every moment of it, whether that's working, whether that's sleeping, whether that's philanthropy, whether that's standing for a cause you believe in, whatever you might do, hanging out with your family, something as simple as sleeping. Enjoy it, like relish it. it it's so much fun when you relish life. So this question is on motivation. And right. it's, it's a pretty one, it's a broad one, but I just say, I mean, I just started my career and there's so many times I lose motivation, right? Story of everyone's life. Yeah. Um, we all lose motivation, even I lose motivation sometimes, and I think... But what really gets you down? Just failure, um, or, or having doors shut when you need them open, um, you know, when you want an opportunity and it's not coming your way, when you've imagined your life to be a certain way and something else happens... So is that like, it? Is that the expectations that we set for ourselves that are half the reason why we feel demotivated? I do think a, a part of it is that. I think it's important to sort of go with the flow sometimes, like, and trust that destiny has a plan for you in a, in a certain way and recognize opportunities. Sometimes we think, ki, Achha, the road, like the, the road is this way and this is how it has to be and if I, the speed bump is not over here, then I'm, it's, I'm a failure. We can't plan that. Yeah. Sometimes you see a little alley that you can turn into and you have to like take so your the chance. So your answer for, the, for this lady on motivation is? I think that you need to get up and first of all allow yourself to feel demotivated sometimes. It's okay. It's okay to say, okay, that sucked. Like, I, that, that shouldn't have happened. And then once you've felt that way and you've allowed yourself to be emotional or feel terrible, I eat a tub of ice cream whenever a film fails for like three days and I wallow in my self-pity. And then I get up and I'm like stronger and I'm better and I tell myself, all right, how am I gonna fix it? But you have to, you can't just immediately do it. We are humans, we're not robots. I think motivation comes from inspiration and you have to find inspiration in first yourself and your ambition and then everything else around you. Create opportunities. It's, don't be too hard on yourself. That's extremely important as well. This is a nice one. It talks about learning, and I know we're putting it in the context of what are the three things you learn from Sky is Pink, but it just applies to anyone. Whatever you're doing something and immersing yourself into something, you have to pick out what you learned. You did something for a year, you went into a job for a year, you did Sky. So, three things you learned from Sky is Pink? Well, the one thing that I definitely learned is um, a positive attitude in, in, the, in the face of turbulence, you know. Um, Sorry for my French, but shit happens to people, you know. It, life, life is a roller coaster of ups and downs. When it's down, it's your attitude that will define how far up you go. And this film is absolutely about that. It's about no matter how turbulent life is. La so Aditi's daughter was diagnosed with um, a, a terminal disease, and they didn't know how long she would survive. They didn't know if she'd live a year, she'd live five years. She lived she, till she was 18, wrote a book, um, gave ink talks, was a motivational speaker about happiness despite of having the disease that she did. Why? Because her parents taught her, even if you don't have a long life, you'll have a big life. Live big. 
And I really learned that from this film. Like when I was reading the script to when I shot it, even Shonali, our director, yeah. she's that person. Like in the face of any stress, she likes to enjoy herself. There'll always be jokes and laughter. There's always like fun times with each other. You have to create fun around you. You, it's, this, it's what the energy that you keep around you that's eventually going to create the life that you want. The people that you have around you, their attitudes. I think motivation so, is so much created by ourselves than really like, you can't look for it. It's not somebody who's not gonna come and give it to you. Yeah. You have to like create it. Just like confidence, motivation, inspiration. These are all things that we have to find for ourselves and look and create for ourselves. Yeah. Hi Priyanka. So uh, have you observed any change or differences uh, in Hollywood in terms of how teams work together to produce a great movie or in terms of culture when it as compared to Bollywood or if there are any learnings around it in team and culture uh, yeah yes um, the difference yeah I do see a difference uh, but I think the the way of filmmaking is the same everywhere filmmaking is the same thing that a director wants you to you know immerse yourself in a character and the producer is saying it do it by nine o'clock um, uh, you know, so the eighties are around you. There's trail. It's the same thing, but the one thing that I have seen a difference, and that's not with everyone. So I can't stereotype Bollywood like that. Like I feel like this film works. Um, like Ronnie and Sid work differently. There are a few producers that I've worked with who work a lot like that. But there's a crazy putting down on paper thing in Hollywood. Like everything the pre is pre-planned. Everything is organized. There's a it's, it's written down, emails are sent, everything is like written and planned. So, um, that, but that is also our strength to a certain extent. That when they um, have a curveball thrown at them, you know, they don't know what, they're like, all right, we need to speak to the, uh, like 12 people have to be spoken about. And we are like, no, it's So it's, I, th I see it as a strength as well that we have. Like I've been able to thrive over there. I surprise people there all the time when I'm just like, all right, well, if this hasn't happened, we'll do it like that. And they're just like, oh, okay, that was easy. Yeah, but put that but in any <laughs> sector and you'll have the same thing. The solution is, ho jaya. Yeah, <laughs> so I feel like, yes, that is a difference, but it's also an asset that we have, um, but it's also something that we can learn. I think a balance of both would be great. Okay. Um, Wow. Oh, nice. We've crossed 70,000 online viewers for the show. Wow, that's huge. <laughs> that's cool. The power of Priyanka Chopra. <laughs> okay, one more nice live question here. We'll take it from a lady if you've got a mic or if somebody's already got the mic in their hand. Um, yeah, okay, somebody's got, and one more mic here. Go ahead. Why don't you go ahead? Hi, Priyanka. Hi, how are you? Over the years, you've evolved wonderfully as an actor. Uh, we talked about challenging your own comfort zone. Now, uh, when we talked about Crossroads, you did mention that having a plan B, and you have multiple plans and all. But when you're actually taking that step, what is the thing that drives you? What are the thoughts that go on in your head, and then you reach a decision? Well, it's an awful thing, actually, but it's worked for me. I wouldn't recommend it. I'm a little bit of a fatalist. So I, whenever I'm taking a risk, I always think of the worst things that could happen. Like I'll always think of, all the worst negative, like this is going to happen, it's going to fail, it's going to, and people are going to boycott me. Like I think of the worst stuff and I, I get like really nervous, but in a way it prepares me for the worst so that I'm not ambushed. So it's worked for me, I don't recommend it. <laughs> But before, I think it's better. I wish I could be, a, but that's just how I've taught myself. There was no one, I, my career has been my own, right? So I had to take the risks and the fallbacks were all mine. The decisions were all mine. There was no one to share it with me. So I kind of became a fatalist, though but, it's not But recalibrating as a what's my worst case scenario is always a good way. It's a yeah, constructive yeah, yeah. one. I don't think it's a, it's a, it's a bad way so? to approach life. I feel like... No, it's not a fatalist because you're actually recalibrating yourself for what's my worst yeah, case Yeah, I don't want to be ambushed. But actually when you create that, you get a more of an impetus because once you've acclimatized this, what's my worst case scenario, yeah. it's all uphill from there. Exactly. So that gives you, <laughs> actually pushes you for a lot more clarity. So I think the point she's raised is very, very relevant. Was there someone else here who had a, yeah, go ahead. Can you get, pass the mic on to her? Hi, Priyanka. Uh, 
Hi Priyanka. Hi. Actually, just wanted to ask you, like, with the same conversation, what's happening here? That uh, when you uh, have a lot of, you know, work going on, and sometimes, you know, you plan it, and sometimes, you know, it's not possible that everything you plan it uh, before, you know, you do. So there are a lot of confusions, you know, uh, when you actually do it. So you take time to uh, think and then do, or you just take random decision and, you know, uh, you just take the next step or you take a step back and you think and then you uh, you know find some pauses that i want to do it or not and then you take time and then you do it i feel like every decision is confusing you're right you know every big step is confusing because you don't know yeah. if it'll turn out the way you want it to i am cautious i take small steps i do but i move what, you can't be so cautious that you don't move and you're sitting down and saying, I don't want to try it because it might go wrong. You have to take small steps. So I'll take a small step. I'll see if it's working out. If it's working, then I'll take the next step. So I, I do it cautiously, but it's very important to keep moving. You have to keep going ahead in the direction of your risk. But be cautious while you do it as well. Plan it. it nothing is random. You can't, I mean, people do take random decisions. For some people it works, some people it doesn't. Usually I try, even if a decision is different, scary, something that I might not know, I try to educate myself about it. I try and do research. It's very, very important to ask the questions, do research about every decision that you make, be prepared, and then take a step. So then even if you fail, you know you have done your best. The failure is not that hard. So I want to ask you, I mean, do you feel in your working career, it's been mostly swimming upstream? It may have been. <laughs> Okay. I am a trout, yes. Okay. Um, it, it does feel like, and maybe that's my destiny that's, or that's the... That's what I'm asking you. Is that more just life or just the way you set ambitions for yourself? But I take lateral decisions. So yeah. when you want to take a decision which is not according to what everyone has been doing, then you have to make a path for yourself which is going to be harder than walking a path which has already been walked. I like to do things for the first time. I like to be the first person to do something. Um, that's I find joy in that. I want to be the first person to do so whatever thing. So I then do. it doesn't tire you out to uh, to swim upstream because the day it starts tiring me out, I'll have to change my ambition. Yeah. And right now, I don't that's think I'm, I don't think I'm at the place where I want to walk someone else's path. Maybe I will be tired, and I'll say, "Chha, bahut ho gaya." I want to do something which is simple. But at this moment, where I am right now is. Simple is boring, normal and you, is And you boring. recommend to everyone, swim upstream. It's always, it can be challenging, but it's very much more rewarding. I, it is, it's damn rewarding when you make your own path. When no one else has done it before you, and you do it, it's like, it's like being an inventor of your own life. It's like, that's yours completely. And it's absolutely something you've created with your hands, your imagination. There's such a joy to it. I, I mean, I don't know, it's not everyone's thing. Some people don't want it, some people don't need it also. So I won't impose that on everyone. It is a hard life when you want to do something for the first time every single day, when you want to be the first one to do something every single day, then yeah, there's a lot of upstream swimming. It's exhausting, it's tiring, but you have to do it like a warrior, like an athlete, you know? There's no, it's, it's game on every single day. Okay, we're gonna take one last question from here. And there's one more last question, which will be the last question here. So whoever's got the mic, go for it. Okay. Whoever's going to yeah. get the mic. Hi, uh -huh. OK, let's go here. OK, we'll take two quick ones. Come. This is Bhavika. And, Hi, Bhavika. Uh, yeah, I work as a student mentor at Upgrad. And uh, my, me and my father are a huge fan of yours. Thank so you. I have just one question. Uh, what were the uh, ob obstacles you faced when you started your career as, a, as an actor? And how did you overcome it? We're running out of time exactly. now. That's a huge question to ask, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> little answer. Well, the little answer is that I didn't know anything when I joined movies. I had never been to Bombay also, forget knowing how movies are made. So the first obstacle was learning the job. Um, because I came from outside of films, I thought it was you know, getting dressed up, wearing the right clothes, doing hair and makeup, and just being fabulous, but it's not. I realized that very quickly. Three days onto set, I was like, Are bapre, this is like, a lot. This is serious work. Yeah, this is serious business. And, um, and I had to educate myself. So a lot of my career, three, four years, it took me to at least get to that place. 
um, again, it, I think it was my instinct that kicked in, which was learn, educate, educate yourself. You know, um, I think that was one way I overcome, overcame my obstacle. Okay, last one. Hi, Hi Priyanka. Uh, so, uh, talking about the, um, you, you spoke about the shelf life uh, everyone has, and uh, looking back at your life, um, how do you see your journey? Is it reaching closer to your destination? Or, or, or all the efforts were just about to reach the start line and now your actual work begins? I don't think life is a destination. I think life is a journey. Um, I don't know what my destination is. I, it's not something I've ever thought of. I just want to make my journey every day excellent. I want to stand and I want to stand for excellence. I want to live. I want to be in pursuit of excellence. Um, and I don't think you, it's, it's not even important what your destination is because as soon as you reach the destination, it'll change. Then you'll have to find something else. Because once you've reached, like, okay, I have film. Karni hai. film milne ke baad, ab aage kya karoge? So the idea is don't even think about having a des destination. Just make sure your journey is amazing. Yeah, I think that's a good place to end because all of us have our own glass ceilings. Mm -hmm. And they're there. And we make as, them for ourselves. Yeah, sometimes. we make them for ourselves. And don't forget, they're glass. That means they're meant to be broken, right? And it's a tough one to break it. It takes a lot of guts to break it. Then it takes a lot of tra tra um, guts more to, to traverse that. But when you do it... It's so satisfying. It is satisfying. It's amazing. So here's the last question before we wind up. It's a relevant one. So really, what's the color of your sky? <laughs> and why? Um, at the moment, it's, it's pink. Yes, Not I can just see that. because of the sky is pink, but because I feel like I'm the most content I've been in my life right now. I feel like professionally I'm at an amazing place where I'm getting to choose the work that I want to do, which is a privilege. It doesn't happen very often. You have to work really hard to get to that place. Um, personally, I'm really happy, uh, even though I would love to get a little bit more vacation time in, but that's not happening. Um, but besides that, I'm just in generally feeling confident, happy. I'm a little tired, I'm overworked, but I wake up um, being very grateful and thankful for the life that I have. So my color is definitely pink. Yeah. Gulabi, gulabi hoongi. <laughs> Fantastic. And I, I, I shouldn't be saying this to you, saying wish you the very best for, wish you the, the, sky, very best too. So for the sky swing, because then you have to come back and say it to me also. But notwithstanding that one smart one there, thanks. Thank you so much for Thank being you, here. Ronnie. And I think it's a very, very strong message. It's gone out for so many different ways. Thank and you. the way you've been able to answer questions about life in general at diverse levels is Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. One more round of applause. Woo! Amazing. Thank you. Thank you, guys.